Yesterday, we had a great time at Vanguard, and uh, so impressive. I think everyone agrees. Everybody's been talking about it. And the crew members, in particular, are what make this place so impressive. And they talked again and again about how much they love working at Vanguard and how much they love you as the founder. Could you share, because many of the people here work in business or business leaders, how you were able to start that culture that lives on today? Well, that's really a nice question because it comes out of a little bit out of uh, what the events that transpired in my book. And that is, I think I started to say this to you yesterday, and it was originally about landmarks, each step along the way that got Vanguard from the little skeleton company to the biggest company in the world. And there were around 12 of them. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I read the book and I, I thought it was a stinking book. Uh, and, but instead of throwing it away, I added a chapter about human beings. And it's called uh, Caring, the Founder's Legacy. And in that, I tell the story of... Uh, when we were probably around, let me say, 200 crew members, we started with 28, it occurred to me that we should have a personnel function. It's called HR today, human relations. And we were not, not about, not in those days, oh no, we're not about to hire anybody. We don't have any money to hire anybody. Uh, so we, I decided to get uh, an individual in the company uh, to be the, the head of personnel. And her name was Eleanor Zentgraf. She worked in the legal department. I cleared it with her boss, said he thought she, she should do it. And I came in and said, uh, I tell a story in the book, I say, Eleanor, we want to start a personnel kind of function. Your boss tells me that you would be good at it and could do it. And uh, would, you, would you be willing to do that? Whatever you want, Mr. Bogle. This was not, in, in those days, not, uh, an answer I got with some frequency. And, and I don't get quite that much anymore. <laughs> Uh-oh, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, and uh, so I said, well, that's great. And thank you. And she goes out the door. And then she comes back in. And she says, I want to do whatever you want me to do, Mr. Bogle. But what is it you want me to do? <laughs> And I said, well, you know, that's a really good question. And I haven't thought much about what I want you to do. So let me try this. I want you to hire nice people and make sure they hire nice people. And out she went and did that. So the key is to have people that have at least a, a, a touch of niceness, of human goodness, uh, and even more than that. And yes, you have to have people that know technology, particularly in the, today, that wasn't much time. And you, so you need the technical, which requires very brilliant people. And, but even then, you should try and get people who are at least fun to be around, who are committed to the company, committed to their jobs, committed to their fellow crew members. You know, it's amazing mm -hmm. how many of these people, I mean, I talked to a lot of them, 25th anniversaries, retirements, Award for Excellence winners. I'm still spending a lot of time which I love, talking to individual crew members or groups of crew members. What do we call those things, Mike? I do team meeting. Team meetings. I do probably three team meetings a week where somebody finds that uh, they want to bring their investment team or their, their whatever team it is uh, in to see me or they get a bigger room and maybe, maybe as many as 20 people. And uh, just I talk to them about anything they want to talk about. Uh, but I think... To the extent, Patty, that uh, what you're saying is a, a valid reflection, uh, I think never underrate uh, the power of trying to be a decent human being. And it's really easy. You know, don't lord it over people. Don't yell at people. I don't usually. Mike's laughing. I never do, really. <laughs> Almost never, uh, hardly ever. Uh, but uh, and uh, for me, uh, the standard is really uh, you build up a reputation for being a decent human being. Uh, there's a lot of admiration, even love, 
from our crew members uh, and uh, we human beings then try to live up to that reputation. So it's constantly, I mean, I'm making bigger demands on myself every day because the, the reputation grows. But I think it's, I think it's just trying to be an, a, a decent human being who cares about other human beings, uh, whether they're crew members or for that matter, whether they're all the people sitting here in this room. And, uh, you know, if you like other people, and I'm not a big political guy at all. I'm not a big handshaker at all. I'm very introverted. Uh, but I, I enjoy the company of people that share my values, and uh, particularly within the company. And if you can build that kind of a culture, and I never did it, like, consciously. I never thought, I have to build a culture. I did what seemed like a natural thing to do. Hire people, be nice people, uh, give them good compensation, uh, have them figure out what, what it is to do. And a lot of them work on the same teams, have worked on the same teams for 25 years. And I, I really like that. They get along well. They come to work. They're happy to go to work on Monday. And, and sometimes even a little sad to leave on Friday. So um, it's it, it comes down to, you know, as, as human beings, if, if we want to do what's right uh, for ourselves and for society, just try and be good to the people around you and make sure that they pick that up from you. It's very easy because they see what happens and have them do handle other people, higher or lower in the, in the, in the pecking order, with uh, humility and respect and confidence and trust. And, you know, I haven't really tried to explain that before, Pat, but that's the best I can do at the moment. Can I uh, add something to that? As a first-hand witness, when we had our first conference in... Uh, with Jack in 2000 in Miami. I was a snowbird and Jack knew that I had a business in this area. And he invited me to join him when I came back for, for lunch, and uh, which I did. And Jack's office is, what, a block or so from the uh, galley. Right. And as we were walking across uh, from Jack's office to the galley, would we have 12,000 employees at that time? Something like that. He seems like he knew everyone as we were walking. He was approachable. He seemed to know their names. He asked how Mary was or how Joe was. And when we got to the, the galley, there is no executive dining room. Jack Absolutely just, not. Jack <laughs> finds an empty table with all of the other employees and sits there. And I think that is... Uh, exactly what we're talking about, what you're talking about, Patty. And uh, can I add one little thing? When Jack talked about how frugal he was in the galley, you go through the buffet, uh, through the line, and you pick out your lunch. And we were going to have a salad, and Jack told me to get the light, lightest plate you could find because they charge by the pound. <laughs> Oh, so I had I had to throw that inside. Some of this is actually true. 